Hey, happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Well, today we are in uh, Zechariah chapter 6, and this is Zechariah's eighth vision. And this is one of the more difficult ones. And of course, there'll be a, a lot of interpretations, but we really need to see what's most important. Hi, I'm Pastor Mark with Heights Christian Church. What we are doing is we're going through the Bible in five years. And as a community of believers, we are doing it together. And so we invite you to subscribe to this channel. Be a part of that with us on a daily basis. If you hit the little bell there up top, there you, there you go. Um, that will give you notification on a daily basis when you can read. we can read together. Uh, the scriptures and in five years we'll get through the bible so we would love for you to be a part of that with us and so we invite you to join it with us okay so let's dive into Zechariah chapter 6 and read it together here we go i looked up again and there before me were four chariots coming out from between two mountains mountains of bronze the first chariot had red horses the second black the third white, the fourth dappled, all of them powerful. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered me, These are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord the whole of the whole world. The one with the black horses is going toward the north country. The one with the white horses toward the west. The one with the dappled horses toward the south. When the powerful horses went out, they were straining to go throughout the earth. And he said, go throughout the earth. So they went throughout the earth. Then he called to me, look, those going toward the north country have given my spirit rest in the land of the north. Wow. Well, there's some lots of things here that we can talk about. And obviously, because of many of the symbols of the visions with which Zacharias sees and uh, a lot of people associate with different passages of scripture uh, around the Bible to be able to help uh, decipher what this vision means for Zechariah. And so, I mean, for example, the bronze mountains. Well, you know, bronze is seen a lot of times in 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 scripture, especially in in Torah. You have the bronze snake. You have the bronze altar. Uh, signifying uh, the, the clen a cleansing power or or purity, um, you you know you have the different horses and their meanings and colors. Um, you know we can look at I'm going to show you a passage in Revelation chapter six. So let's read this and see if we can gather together this stuff. So I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the four seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come! Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, I looked. Before me there was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what would sound like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, six pounds of barley for a daily's wage for a day's wage. Do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was followed close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Oftentimes, this is um, the Zechariah passage is referred to these four horses. But uh, we don't want to get lost in um, trying to decipher all of this. We need to focus on what's most important, and that is the authority of God. You know, the horses are straining to go out and do it, but they don't go until God gives the order for them to do it. So one of the things that we can learn is that God is in control. God is the one who directs things. Nothing happens on this earth without God's observance and authority given. So yes, 
Do bad things happen? Good things happen? Sure. But God is aware of all of it, and it's all going according to his plan. And so, Zechariah in this vision is referring to God's authority over all of this, and he is punishing the other nations. You know, there are four. Some go north, some go west, some go south. What, you know, the question, of where's the red horse? After this description of the red horse, the red horse doesn't go anywhere. Um, or how come nobody goes east? Well, if we're talking about Palestine, that's the desert, uh, the Arab desert. And so there's really no need to go. There's no nation there. Right? But what Zechariah is seeing, that, that God is laying judgment on the four corners of the earth, the four winds. It's also known as, he sees that the chariots represent the spirits of God. These are the messengers of God that are going out into all the earth doing the Lord's bidding. So we need to remember that God is in control. We need to rest in that because not only is he in control, are, are we worried that he's in control because he might do something mean or bad to us? We have to trust that God is good. He's good all the time, every time. He is loving, he is abounding in love, but he's also holy. And He nothing is going to escape his attention and he is going to bring judgment and love and direction at the end of the age. And so we can rest in that. We can have peace knowing that God is in control. Even though our current situation may be devastating to us and very upsetting to us, we know someone who's not upset and because he's in control. And that's the Lord God Almighty. And he has a plan. We see that so many times God allowing stuff to happen. You get the story of Joseph in Genesis or the story of Revelation where uh, God brings everything back to his fruition. So don't let the conjectures get in the way. Don't try to decipher everything because, you know, you could get it wrong. And you, we don't want to be wrong, but we want to look at the overarching idea. God is in control and that he is good and we can trust him in that. I hope this brings you peace. I hope this gives you comfort and encouragement. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow.